All right. Thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking time out of the summit. I uh, hope everybody's getting a lot of valuable content. I know there's been a lot of uh, really interesting announcements and great use cases talked about. Um, let me introduce myself. I, I, my name is Chris Harold. Uh, I am the CTO for Big Data Solutions at EMC. Um, you might have heard of us, small storage company, do some stuff with spinning disk. Um, we are very heavily invested in the Hadoop community. We are very heavily invested in um, making Hadoop a mainstream line of business tool for our customers. And what I wanted to come talk to you guys today about uh, when I was invited to speak here was specifically around uh, DevOps. And this is a drum that I bang on pretty hard uh, in my social media circles and blogging and, and in speaking engagements like this. And specifically around Hadoop and analytics, uh, I firmly believe that analytics is the, is the use case, is the killer app that DevOps has been waiting for to really mature. And so what I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about today, uh, I'm probably gonna say some things that purists don't like to hear. I'm probably gonna say some things that might be um, instigating in a certain way, but what I'm basing that on is the experience of spending the last six years working in this space directly with a number of customers trying to become operational around this type of analytics environment, right? And so I'm gonna share with you kind of my evolution, uh, just so you guys know, I spent 20 years in operations before I came to EMC. Um, I've slept under my desk. I've been on call overnight. I've watched the CIO's mailbox corrupt and been helpless. Um, so I've lived that operational mindset. I've also lived on the dev side. I was a DBA. Uh, I was a data scientist for a while. I did a bunch of BI and analytics work. So I've kind of lived both sides of this coin. And I, that's kind of the perspective that I'm bringing to the table when we talk about it to you guys today. So um, the olden days of working in vacuums, right? Everybody has, probably remembers this uh, because in space, no one can hear you scream. So developers back in the olden days, right? They got their little test rig and their, and their little environment and they did their coding, they did their thing and the application was ready to go and then it was out the door and over the wall, right? The ops guy, me, sat over there and said, it doesn't seem to be working on the same rig. I don't know what's wrong. I will throw hardware at it until it works, right? Um, I've lived this life, it's awful. I highly do not recommend it to anybody. As data scientists, as developers, as people as part of this community of open source uh, activists, right, that are working in this Hadoop space, this is a lot like what you guys are building. And it looks a lot like this guy from a long time ago. It's really outdated to an operator's eyes. And I don't want us to fall into that same trap, right? We can't just keep throwing hardware at the problem because that doesn't work in the long term. Operations, where I, where I came out of, the space that I'm most familiar with, that I'm most at home with, we fix things that are broken, right? My mantra when I was in operations for 20 years was if nobody knows I work at the company, I'm doing my job correctly, right? Because the only time people knew that I worked there was when something was broken, right? And back in the day when I first got into operations a long time ago, Everything was physical dedicated servers, and if that server went down, it took everything with it, and then nobody could do their job, and things were very bad, right? We fixed that a long time ago in operations, right? We, we pushed for technologies like virtualization, containers, uh, you know, coordination and management layer, management and orchestration layer applications, and there are infinite numbers of possibilities of solutions around this, right? Certainly. Some of the ones that you guys are seeing today, I'm sure Mesos, OpenStack, um, you know, any of the virtual stream type stuff. It, obviously cloud follows this exact same model. And the point is lots of dedicated servers is broken for an IT ops guy, for your rank and file guys who are trying to support your initiatives and your business needs. That model is, is bad and we're trying to fix it, right? Because we're ops guys and that's what we do is fix broken things. So what we've done, right, is we've said, hey, let's, let's get together here. Let's, let's get ourselves squared away 
let's get dev and ops actually working together. Now, this is the first time I've given a DevOps conversation to people that are more dev, right? More data scientists, more dev, more analytics-minded people. I give this presentation a lot to ops people. EMC tends to work with operations people. That's, that's our broadest customer base. And what I tell them is, what I really want for them someday is when a developer comes to them and says, my application isn't working right, I want them to be able to say, that's because your code is lousy, you should fix that, right? And right now, no ops guy can say that, not confidently, a few of us can. But the point is, if we, as ops guys, are meeting you guys halfway in this DevOps world, right, we should be working a lot tighter together. And what that means for you guys is one of the things that dev guys do, right? It's like, like all those videos, right? Stuff that insert blank here says, right? So things that dev guys say, right? I don't care what it runs on as long as it runs. Normally that's okay, but you have to start thinking like an operations guy when you're building these applications and trying to get these environments up and running. It's one thing to build it and screw around with it and test it out. It's another thing to actually take that and operationalize it and run your business on it, right? And that's where everybody's falling down. Who saw the Gartner report two weeks ago about Hadoop adoption? Right? Anybody? Anybody? Good. Right. Hadoop adoption has stalled in the enterprise, right? That's the title of the report. Um, number one reason cited, anybody want to take a guess? It's because it's really hard to make it work. It's really hard to get up and running. I've installed Last time I counted, and I don't keep track really, but I've installed something like 500 Hadoop clusters, right? Just, just through various projects and testing and working and screwing around. And it still takes me, you know, something I would consider operationally ready would probably be like a week's worth of work for me, which is excessive in the extreme as far as I'm concerned because I can deploy like an exchange cluster in an afternoon, right? Because we've fixed all those problems for those legacy type applications. We're still struggling with operationalizing these new generations of applications. And so in order to do that, we, right? We, the royal we, data scientists, developers, application people have to start being mindful of what we're doing to our operations guys. This is, this is the heart of that, right? Big data is where the rubber meets the road. This, this is what DevOps has been waiting for to really become a thing, right? Um, as stewards of, H, of, of Hadoop and HDFS, right, uh, of both the compute aspect and the storage aspect, it's really, a, I, think, I believe firmly that it's incumbent on us to, to think ahead, to really want to support the operationalization of something that we're building. And to that end, it's just, it's not okay to go back, to fall back to because it's always been done that way, right? If we had done that in operations, there would, there would, there would never have been, you know, virtualization. There would never have been shared storage. There would never have been cloud, right? None of those things would exist because, well, we've always done it with dedicated servers. Why wouldn't we just keep doing that, right? And we all know that that model doesn't scale, that that's broken, right, from an operations perspective. But at the end of the day, we're also trying to support our, our, you know, our brethren in development and in data sciences, and you guys just need it to work. You don't necessarily care what it works on as long as it runs, right? So I firmly believe, we firmly believe at EMC specifically, but, but just in general, that this is why big data is a team sport. You've got to get everybody together to actually do data analytics, big data, Hadoop specifically, in a holistic fashion across your enterprise. It's not just about the developers. It's not just about the data scientists. It's not just about data engineering, uh, pipeline folks, or, or data source people, or BI people, or just regular line of business users. Everybody has a stake at the table in this particular relationship. And we think that that team sport right, has to encompass everybody that's at the table. And for you guys, that means, how am I interacting with my ops guys? How am I interacting with my infrastructure people? How am I making sure that what I'm doing is going to be worthwhile to the business in the long run? Because I've seen some really cool analytics projects in sandboxes that just will never see the light of day because they can't be operationalized, right? 
there's just no way to scale what they're doing in a small footprint into something that the business can run itself on. And that's the real challenge. So this is the part where, specific to Hadoop, right? I, th these are the things that I hear all the time, right? Hadoop has to be storage and compute local. Uh, virtual Hadoop is fine if you're screwing around, but it's no good for production. Um, Cloud-based Hadoop is so much easier and faster, which is technically true. Uh, Hadoop is shared nothing, you can't use shared resources for it, right? We have countless customer examples, countless environments where all of these things are not true, right? People are starting to wake up to the idea that I need Hadoop, I need a solution for data analytics, I need to drive something, right? I need to drive a business outcome that will actually provide value to the business, but at the end of the day, we're stuck with this outmoded model of a bunch of physical servers and a bunch of DAS that's really, really hard to operationalize because it's really cumbersome and clunky for an, from an ops perspective to make that work, right? And this is universal. I, I, even the largest and, and most scaled Hadoop adopters have this problem, right? I, I have talked to a number of them, and they have said, we get it, we understand, we've got a thousand Hadoop nodes, it's awful, please help us fix it. Right? We know Hadoop is important, we're never getting rid of it, but we realize that just because we've always done it that way isn't the right answer anymore. Right? We have got to find a new operational model that brings this stuff together. Right? So you know, we've done numbers of comparisons. I'm happy to share offline with anybody who wants to see it, performance numbers and metrics and comparisons. We've done this in a number of customer environments. We've done it with real data sets. We've done it with um, all kinds of different data sets and all kinds of different means of getting in from the basics of pig and, and, and uh, Mahout and R through uh, Hive and then into things like HQL and, and Hawk and things like that. So I mean, we've run lots of side-by-side -side comparisons of diverged infrastructure versus uh, you know, physical DAS monolithic style environment. And 100% across the board, what I have heard from people is yeah, we can find jobs that run really poorly in a virtualized space or in a separate compute and storage space, um, but the trade-off in operational support, right, and the ability to actually scale it is worth the 10 minutes longer that the job runs, right? If you really need to manage your business to a 10-minute job, okay, well, there's ways to do that, and that's fine. Some people do. But generally speaking, the rank and file of us, the broad base of us, we're not, 10 minutes isn't a big delta when you're talking about batch processing, right? You start getting into real time and things like that, okay, now we're talking about a different beast altogether. But again, the platform has to support all of that, right? That's DevOps in a nutshell. New use case shows up, you've gotta have the operational capability to support it. That's just how it goes, right? The answer from operations, from my side, can never be no, right? When you come to me and you say, hey, we need more RAM, we need more CPU, we need more disk. I can't go, eh, yeah, that's like six months, man. Right? That's just never a good answer, because right, what's the first thing everybody does? That's cool, man, I'll go to Amazon. Right? I mean, that's, how, that's why the cloud is so successful, because it's, it is, it's faster, it's easier. But from a DevOps perspective, and more specifically from an ops perspective, I should be able to deliver that to you on-prem, like there, there's no way that you should have to go out to solve your business use case, that's just silly, right? And a lot of the customers, um, certainly that are heavy data analytics users, heavily regulated, right? Uh, a lot of data governance need and security need and the cloud's just not an option. But they still need the cloud functionality, right? And that's what DevOps is all about. So I mean, that's why I truly believe like this is where the rubber meets the road, this is where DevOps has been waiting for like this, this use case to really drive it. Hybrid clouds and things like that is great, but this is the one that like everybody sees the value in analytics and data-driven business and digital business transformation and, and data-driven application development and the money that it can generate for their business down the road. That, once you put revenue behind it, suddenly, oh, we have a reason to really do this, right? And that's where we're at. So. I like to talk about a term when I, when I speak about this. So everybody's heard the term data lake, right? Data lake means a lot of different things to anybody that you talk to. When we talk about a data lake, what we are specifically talking about is a DevOps mechanism, right? And why I say it's a DevOps mechanism 
is because it delivers on the ability to rapidly service new use cases without a complete redo of your entire environment. Right? That's what DevOps is for. Right? So our target always within our, within our platforms at EMC, when we talk about the data lake or data analytics, is we want to increase data gravity. There's a couple of really good blog posts. Um, unfortunately, I did not write either of them. Um, about data gravity. There's actually a formula that's kind of being thrown around by a couple of math guys that are like trying to figure out the formula for calculating your own data gravity, which I find fairly fascinating. Um, but the key salient point to keep in mind about data gravity is the whole purpose is I want to keep data, right, close to the places that I am consuming it. And the reason I brought up data lake before is the data lake construct is how you do that mechanically, right, from a DevOps perspective, because I can bring all the pieces that I need as close together as possible, which allows me to interact very quickly. There's a connotation there, though, that I have to physically pick everything up and move it into a data lake to get value out of it. I have to physically pick it up and put it into Hadoop, right? It's not the case. It's data awareness. And there are tons and tons, as you guys know, of open source and commercially available uh, projects that are out there that are all about unifying data from multiple different disparate data sets. We believe that the common currency or the currency of exchange for those analytics tools is going to be HDFS for a long time, right? The HDFS storage protocol is not going away. Hadoop is evolving, right? We're seeing Spark and Storm and things like that as people want to push more into the real time and more into the in-memory analytics capability space. But Parking that data as close as possible to my analytics and then being able to actually do something with those insights, with those analytics, like building data-driven applications is that next step, right? That's, that's, the, that's where you have to produce. You have to drive something with those analytics and that's obviously the thing that most people are doing. We I carry them around in our pockets on our phone all the time, right? Data-driven applications are everywhere. And every company that we work with is, is after this model. And if you're thinking in that DevOps forward, how do I operationalize this sort of mindset? Very easy to drive this type of functionality. Right? So the other thing that I like to talk about, and this is something that I brought up um, in, in a number of uh, sessions like this, I really feel like we've kind of missed the boat as IT as a whole, right? You guys are part of technology, so you guys are guilty too. Um, data's a fixed asset. It's a thing, right? People look at data as a, as a, as a, as a sink or, or as a, a cost or as an overhead, right? And, and really, in order to truly embrace the DevOps culture, we, right, operations and development, need to, need to meet together and start managing data like a fixed asset. Right? If I flip my laptop over, got an asset tag on it. I know the, the company knows where that laptop is, knows how to get to it, knows who has it in theory, right, if I haven't loaned it to somebody. And, and we need to start treating data that way, right? In fact, we were talking um, just yesterday with, a, with another one of the, our partners that's here, and trying to calculate the value of a byte of data, right? Like how much is a byte of your data worth? It's really difficult to do. We've been trying for a long time. Like there's way too many variables and the formula just gets you know, unwieldy to actually solve. But the point is, if we're not thinking about our data sets as value, as, as dollars and cents, well, why are we holding on to it, right? Why even bother storing it in the first place? We've got to produce something from that. And that's the whole DevOps culture, the whole DevOps mantra is, how do I take that data, how do I give it context and purpose, and how do I ascribe value to it in the simplest way forward possible? All right, we've got good tooling. Hadoop is a fantastic tool for analytics. Certainly the ecosystem around it derives a lot of value, but the data itself can't just sit there in a bucket, right? We need to put rules and, and governance and security around it. And obviously, that's all starting, right? Certainly, I know Hortonworks is working on Atlas. They're big partners in Sentry and Ranger. Um, as, as are we, but that's just a start and it's one part of the larger ecosystem, right? We're thinking much bigger than that. We're thinking about securing data at its source, during ingest, while it's stored, 
after it's consumed, right? I, I mean, there's, there's a, just a litany. And the nice thing is EMC is really good at managing data storage. We've been doing it for a long time. We're, we're well aware of how and where data goes. And we're putting that policy engine in place across the whole of that data-centric environment, right? So that's really, to me, this, this whole concept of like data having intrinsic value is really critical to understand why you would build a data lake in the first place, why you would use Hadoop in the first place, right? And customers are starting to get it, right? C uh, certainly, like everybody in this room already gets it, right? Data has value, duh. You guys are looking at me like, yeah, okay, whatever. Heard this like 10 years ago. But that, that's trickling down, right? It's getting past the early adopters, it's getting past the big enterprises, it's getting into the more rank and file you know, business space, and that's the real, that's, that's the real mismatch right now is how as a small to medium business do I operationalize this environment to take advantage of the value of my data? It's a fixed asset. How do I take advantage of that? It's really hard to stand up Hadoop environments. I don't know how to do that. I don't even know where to start, right? I met with a customer, and then we had a slide that showed kind of data flows, and we had, you know, all the things, right? Kafka and RabbitMQ meshes brokers and in-memory databases up here, and Horton works down here, and this over here. And he, he looks at the slide, and he's like, look, look, look. I get it. I know of all of the things on this slide. I literally have no idea how to even start filling in this picture, right? And that's, that's the real challenge, because it's really hard to operationalize all of those tools. And so we're working on ways that you can get around that. That's why we're building platforms that support the rapid adoption of operational things like Hadoop and in memory and graph databases and NoSQL and things like that, right? That's actually all I have. I didn't want to really come up here and pander to you guys. I wanted to make it a little more interactive than that. Uh, I'm certainly more than willing to take questions, um, and we can talk more in specific about some of the things that EMC is doing in particular, but I really wanted to just give you an operator's perspective on this whole Hadoop space and, and help you guys understand why your ops guys probably you know, look at you sideways when you walk through the halls around them and stuff like that. So, is there any questions? Okay. Agreed. Sure, sure. So the, uh, just so you guys all hear, the question was um, around how do we help operations identify when something in this environment is broken, basically, right? How do, how do we, uh, and, and how do we make the translation to the ops team? Um, certainly in the platform that we're constructing, uh, the data lake platform that EMC has built, that's kind of inbuilt. Um, and, and that's kind of the DevOps model from the get-go, right, is part of it, frankly, as an ops guy, shame on me. Right? If I don't understand the interaction of the components, I, that's, that's, that's on me. Right? I, have to, I have to be willing to take the time to actually pay attention and learn. But that's not always good enough, and sometimes it's very complex and it's very hard to sort out. Um, I think what you're seeing is, certainly in the Hadoop space, you've got tools like Ambari and Yarn that are trying to like, sort of level the playing field right, to make it so that it's a lot easier to troubleshoot. There's, this is just a high complexity moving parts environment. It's very difficult to, to hone in, to nail down a specific broken piece as an ops guy if I don't understand the lay of the land. And so I think there's two ways that you go about it. One, either your ops guys get super smart really fast, which is you know, probably unlikely because it takes time, right? Um, the other one is, and, and you're seeing this more and more, and certainly this is what we're what we're putting together from the EMC side is, this is where things like engineered solutions start to become really important. Because it's really hard to operationalize the Wild West, right? If everybody's just kind of doing their own thing and you got 10 different Hadoop clusters running around that were hand-built by, by 20 different people, how, how do you unify that together, right? And so we're really looking at it from a commoditization 
of the infrastructure and, and the platform layer so that you can, you can, can just consume as a resource. And then troubleshooting is a lot easier because it's packaged, right? So if, you, if you're pre-packaging, and it's not that you have to, to go out and buy an engineered solution to do that. You can build that tooling in-house if you have the development capability. It's just a, it's a pros and cons thing, right? It will take you time. You, you have to have the skill set in-house to get there, right? And that, and that takes time. Or you can leverage the experience of the, of the people in the field that are already doing it, right? And so when we talk about like our engineered platform, I mean, we engineered that with Hortonworks, right? We went out and said, hey, we want you guys as part of this platform. It's really important that you're here. Please tell us how to run your stuff correctly so that we can can it and deploy it in our engineered solution so that operationally it's a lot easier to troubleshoot, to fix, to find fault, that kind of thing, right? And so I, I think you're seeing that evolution of tooling happen, but like any evolution, it takes time, right? And so, I mean, my recommendation to everybody always, and, and like I said at the beginning, I generally talk to more operations people, get smart. Spend some time on a Friday afternoon reading a book. You know, I mean, go on, go online and Google JSON or, you know, Hadoop or HDFS or something like that. You can't, it's not, you can't do it in a vacuum, right? You need to spend some time, you need to learn, right, what's going on. Um, but that's kind of what the DevOps mantra is, is that ops has to meet us halfway too, right? They can't just kind of hang out over here and wait for us to fix everything, right? So, I mean, it, there's just, so, there's so many variables. There's so many moving parts that, it's going to take one of those two forms. Either you're going to build it, or you're, or you're going to, you're going to buy a pre-done solution. Like there's just no middle ground with this. Right? So, thank you. Anybody else? All right, I'll give you back ten minutes. Thank you guys very much for your time. Appreciate it. If there's any other questions, you guys can come up here.